American news media are heavily uh, domestically oriented, uh, both because it's cheaper to produce domestic news and because it's kind of a circular argument. The audience is, is much more interested in domestic news and disinterested in world news. And so it pays to cater to the audience's taste. One consequence of the under-provision of international news is that people are simply ignorant. And when a policy issue arises, some event occurs involving international politics, that gives uh, political leaders, elected officials, the opportunity to shape public opinion. Uh, they can assert facts uh, and they don't really have to justify those facts. They don't have to defend the facts because the public is somewhat naive. And when you have uh, news media that's not willing to, to scrutinize the statements of elected officials, that simply compounds the problem. This is definitely a democratizing influence. You don't have to have big bucks to have a website. Any candidate can have a website. Uh, you can raise money online in very small contributions. People can donate $5 or $10. So in that sense, it gives candidates who are relatively unknown, who are not the big spenders, it gives them a chance. I'm not saying it's going to somehow equalize the playing field, but it certainly has a leveling effect. Well, they're using it in a variety of ways. The most important is to raise money. So they're allowing people to make contributions by just simply clicking on a link. Uh, the, other, uh, the other ways are sort of ironic because these are ways in which new media are being used to attract the attention of old media. So online town halls, for instance, uh, candidates have been doing that quite regularly. And they're so novel uh, that they get written up by the mainstream press. So that's, in a sense, it's kind of a gimmick. A gimmick. Uh, they want to use, uh, do something different, and therefore become newsworthy. It's a way in which the old-fashioned idea of a debate has been, in a sense, democratized. So it's basically, it's a kind of a debate in which the questioners are members of the audience. So anyone can submit a question, and the candidates simply answer. So it gets rid of the journalists. Uh, you don't have a panel of questioners. You simply have people sending in their questions online. There's usually a sponsor for an on online town hall meeting. So Facebook has sponsored. So what happens is Obama would show up at the Facebook HQ and the live audience are people who work for Facebook, selected high level employees. And so they get to listen in as these questions come in from over the web and he answers them and, and that's it. Well, the main difference is, is in what I would call the freedom from the press. In the old days, if a candidate wanted to get her message across, it had to be through some form of journalism. A reporter had to say something about this campaign or this candidate and then it would trickle down to the level of, of the ordinary citizen, the voting public. But today, uh, candidates all have their own websites. They've got blogs, they've got uh, Twitter feeds, uh, you name it. They've got followers on Facebook. So they don't need the press. Uh, they can, to a certain degree, get the information out there on their own. Of course, it helps to have press coverage as well. And so that's why the example of the online town hall meeting is so compelling is because not only do they get to reach a live audience via the web, but they also get then people who pick up the New York Times the next day get to read about it.